channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be finishing up Nergagante. If you missed yesterday's video, I'll leave links down below, but we did the clay pieces and the painting for Nergagante, and today we're going to do the sewing and putting everything together. Anyways, let's get started. Okay guys, so the first thing we're going to be working on is getting all of our fabric pieces cut out and ready to put together. Now I'm going to be doing a lot of detail work to these before we actually start putting our body together, so we're going to do that first. So I'm going to go over the pattern for this and show you all the different pieces that I had to draw out, and then we can start working on the details. So right here is the main body piece, and you'll notice that it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be putting this together a lot differently than I have been with other creatures. So the side body pieces do not have any legs on them like normal. We're actually going to connect those later. So I have the holes drawn out on the pattern, but I'm not going to cut them out on the fabric just yet. Next piece of our pattern is our belly piece. Now for this, I wanted the orange of the belly to fade from a bright orange to a lighter one, so I made it into two different fabric pieces. So the front is an orange, and then the back is kind of a lighter khaki color that we'll end up painting to blend into the orange. That way we can create kind of a fade. So we'll end up sewing these two pieces together. And then right here are the pattern pieces for the arms. Now for the arms, I kind of want them to jet out so they have big shoulders. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to have to have three pieces for this. We're going to have to have kind of a front, a back, and then a bottom part that's going to be kind of the inside part of the leg. And all this is going to be just a strip that goes in between these two pieces. This will make a lot more sense when we start putting everything together. And then right here are the pattern pieces for our back legs. Now later on I actually do change this up a bit, so these little triangle pieces which are kind of confusing to begin with, I ended up not even using them. So we just kind of used this and then the back part. So again, we're not going to be using any of the triangle pieces, we're just going to use the top of the leg and then the inside part of the leg. And then lastly for our patterns, we're going to need our wings and our back piece. Now the back piece is going to be kind of small, we just mainly need it so there's a bit of a gap between the wings, so it makes a bit more sense. And then the wings, we're going to use this to make the top and bottom half of the wings. As you can see, I don't have all the fabric pieces cut out for the wings right now, and that's because I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to do the back of the wing. But I ended up just cutting it out like I did with these pieces. So right here are going to be the underside of the wing, and these are going to get painted so we get all the nice coppery colors and spots to them. And then the back side of the wing is going to be black. So the main detail that I want to add to all of our fabric pieces before we start putting everything together is a nice scaling effect. So the color that the fabric pieces are right now is mainly going to be kind of in between the cracks of the scales. So what we need to do is we need to add some scaling to this. So how I'm going to do this is I took my pattern pieces and I ended up drawing out how I want the scales to look on the body. So I basically did this to almost all the fabric pieces, so we have a lot to work on. Now to make this look really cool, I decided I wanted to use fake leather for this, and I'm going to use a black fake leather. So you're probably wondering how I'm going to sew all these scales into place. I'm not going to cut them all out and sew them one at a time. What we're going to do is we're going to take our fake leather and lay it out, and we're going to lay our fabric pieces out on top of that. I'm going to draw the scale patterns onto the fabric pieces on the back side, and we're going to pin these together and follow all of these lines with the sewing machine. Now honestly, if you want to do this, it's definitely well worth it because I love the results of it, but it takes forever. I think for this piece, it took me two and a half days to sew all of the skill pieces on. So again, we're just going to pin our fabric pieces into place onto the leather, and then we're going to take our sewing machine and just go around all of the little scales. Now I will be honest, I didn't sew on all the scales that I originally drew out, and that's because I just kind of got tired after two and a half days of sewing. You just kind of want to stop and cut all the scales out. So I ended up skipping some of the scales here and there just to make it a little easier, and you really don't notice a difference. So after two and a half days of sewing, the only thing I need to do now is cut off all the extra fake leather and then to cut in between the scales so the fabric peeks through in between them. Okay, so this is what our fabric pieces look like right now, but we do need to add a bit more detail before we start putting everything together. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of painting on our fabric, just to add some highlights and to dirty it up a bit to make it look a little bit more natural. So how we're going to do this is first I'm going to get my fabric wet so it absorbs the paint better. So I'm just going to kind of spray everything down and then we can start adding our colors where we want them and then just kind of blend them in and mess around with it until we like how it looks. Of course with the fabric being wet it's going to look a little darker right now but once it dries it's going to brighten up a bit more. 
So the colors that I'm mainly painting onto the body pieces are going to be orange, reds, and then a little bit of black here and there. The cool thing about this when you're painting, you don't have to paint in between the scales. The leather doesn't absorb the paint until it dries onto it, so you can actually just paint right over it and then brush away any extra paint that got on the scales. And then if the paint doesn't come off the scales, you could just go over it again with a different color. So with the sides, the main thing I want to try and do is kind of get a bit more of a glow in the middle of the body. The only thing is I need to make sure that the bright colors are going to be more on the underside of him and not the top because Nergagante's top is very black and most of his coloring is on his belly and the inside parts of his arms. And now the last bit of fabric that we need to paint is going to be the underparts of the wings and then we're going to actually start putting the wings together once all of this is dried. So the wings are going to be the first thing that we work on. So what I want to do with the wings is I want to have the tips of the wings orange and I want it to fade to a brown. So we're going to start with adding some orange to the tips and then we're going to start adding darker and darker browns as we get closer to the top of the wing. Now because the fabric of the wings is wet right now while we're painting, the colors are going to blend into each other naturally, but I want to make sure that they blend properly, so I am going to go over them and kind of make sure that they go together. And it will help once in a while if you kind of spray it down a bit more to help it bleed into itself. You do want to be careful because you don't want your wings completely drenched, you just want them damp enough so that the colors bleed. Once I'm happy with how the orange and browns look, I'm going to have to leave these to dry first because if we add any other details, they're just going to bleed into this and I don't want that. I want the details to be a bit more crisp. So the wings are going to dry overnight and as soon as they're dry to touch, we can start adding some black spots to them. So I just have some watered down black paint and I'm just going to kind of blotch it all over the wing. I'm going to try and keep this looking as natural as possible, so I'm not going to do any type of pattern or anything. I'm going to make some spots larger and some spots smaller. Once we have all the spots painted on, these are going to have to dry again, and then we can start putting everything together. Luckily, the whole wing isn't soaking wet right now, so it's only going to take a few hours. Okay, so our fabric is finally all dry, and we're going to start sewing the wings together. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the pieces that we painted and then the black pieces that we sewed the scales on and we're going to sandwich these together and start pinning them so we can sew them with the sewing machine. Now we're going to be sewing these inside out so you want to make sure that the sides that you want on the outside of the wing are on the inside right now. So we're just going to pin these together and then we're going to use our sewing machine to just sew all the way around them. After that we can flip our wings right side out and then we have a little bit more sewing, we need to sew the finger pieces into place. So what I ended up doing is I used a white pencil and I just drew out on top of the black part of the wing where I wanted all the finger pieces to go. Then I'm going to pin this together again and use my sewing machine to follow these lines. After that we're going to stuff the very tops of the wings and then we're going to make a wire frame for these. So what you want to do is you want to measure out the length of the wing at the very top and you're going to double that and then add probably like six or something inches to that so you have enough wire to add this to the wire frame that's for the body. So these wings are going to be connected on the same wire and that's why we're doubling it. So you're going to cut your wire, bend it in half and then you're going to run your wire through the wings. So we're going to add a little bit more detail to the wings and then we're going to move on to sewing the body. So what we need to do is we need to add some spikes to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same fake leather that we used for the scales and I'm going to put two pieces together and draw out a little spike. Then I'm going to use my sewing machine to sew around this and then we're going to cut it out and then we're going to flip it right side out and then we can either stuff it, I might stuff the larger ones and then the smaller ones I won't. And then we're just going to sew these into place on the wing. Now you'll be surprised how many of these spikes I ended up using, and that's because we're not just adding them to the wings, we're also adding them to the front arms, the back legs, and even some of the body. Okay, so right now our wings are basically done, so we're going to start putting our body together. Okay, so the first bit of sewing that we're going to do to put the body together is we're going to take the belly piece, and we're going to sew those two pieces together to make one solid belly piece. Then we're going to take our solid belly piece and then we're going to take the sides of the body and we're going to sew those together as well. 
Afterwards, you'll have something that looks like this. Now at this point, to put everything together, all of my sewing is going to be by hand, and that's because you're either going to have a weird angle where you can't get it into the sewing machine, or everything is going to be too thick to actually sew in the sewing machine, and I don't want to break a needle. Okay, one more thing we need to do to our body piece is we need to cut some holes for our legs. Now I'm not going to be cutting the whole hole, I'm just going to be cutting really tiny ones for the wires, and it'll make more sense once we start putting the legs on. Now before we start messing with the wire frame, we're going to start gluing the head onto the body. So I'm going to take my glues and we're going to glue the fabric for the neck all the way around the base of the head. After that, we're going to let this glue dry for a little bit and then we can add a wire frame to the body. Now the wire frame is really simple. The only difference between this and a normal wire frame that I like making is I had to reinforce the wires because of how heavy the clay pieces are. So we want the head to hold up and we can't do that unless we have the wires strong enough. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the wires for the legs and we're going to run it through those tiny little holes that we have on the body. After that, we're going to take the wire for the neck and we're going to glue our head onto that. So we're just going to push the wire into the back of the head. We're going to let that dry a little bit to make sure it's nice and secure, and then we're going to take the back piece and glue that to the very top of the head. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sew the neck closed. So we're just going to take that back piece and the side pieces and sew along it until we get to the point where the wings need to connect. Once we're to that point, we need to add the wings to the wire frame, so we're going to take the wires for the wings and we're going to wrap them onto the wire frame that we have inside of the body. After that, we're going to sew the wing into place. So we're going to take the side piece and we're going to sew the portion of the wing that has stuffing in it. So we're just going to sew that right now, and then we're going to do the same thing to the top of the wing. Once we have that portion of the wing sewn into place, we can continue down the wing sewing it to the body. And of course, while we're doing this, we're going to be stuffing the body as we go. That way we don't have to do all of it at the end when there's just a tiny little hole. So after the wings are sewn into place, what we're going to do is we're going to continue sewing up the rest of the tail. So again, we're going to be stuffing the body and just keep going down the body until everything is closed up. Okay, so the body is pretty much done right now. So what we're going to do first is we're going to touch up the tops of the wings. We're going to add some more spikes to them, and then we're going to move on to adding the legs to the piece. Okay, so we're going to add the back legs first. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the inside part of the leg and the outside part of the leg and we're going to sandwich them together and sew down the front of them with the sewing machine. I did kind of lie, we are going to use the sewing machine for this. Okay, so those two pieces are put together and now we're going to start sewing this onto the body. So we're going to basically just kind of follow the outline of where the leg is supposed to go. I already drew this out using the pattern that we originally had, and I'm just going to start sewing the under part of the leg and then start sewing up the leg until it goes all the way around. Make sure that the wire for the leg goes in between the two pieces of fabric as you're sewing. That way you don't have the wire sticking out randomly. You want it to be inside of the leg when you're done. After you have the fabric for the legs sewn into place, now what we need to do is we need to add the clay legs to the wire frame. So we're going to take those back legs and we're going to wrap them onto the ends of the wires for the legs. So we're going to wrap those into place, make sure they're nice and secure, and then we're going to glue the fabric for the legs around the base of the ankles. We're going to glue it all the way around, let it dry, and then we can stuff the legs and close them up. Once we have the legs closed up and they're nice and stuffed, we're going to start adding some spikes to it. So I'm just going to add some to the back of the thigh kind of region and just make sure that that one area that we didn't put scales is nice and covered. Okay, now we're going to start working on adding the front legs to the piece. Now remember there's going to be three pieces of fabric for this, so what we're going to do instead of sewing down the front of the legs with the sewing machine, we're actually going to be sewing down the back of the leg with the sewing machine. So we're going to sew these together and then we're going to take that strip of fabric and we're going to sew it to one side of the leg. So you're going to have something roughly like this. So I'm going to add the clay feet to the front wires and then we're going to start sewing the fabric for the legs in place just like we did with the back legs. And then just like the back legs, we're going to take the fabric for the front legs and we're going to glue it around the base of the feet. Again, let this dry for a little bit and then we're going to start stuffing and closing this up as well. 
Now for the front legs, we're gonna add a lot more spikes to them than we did with the back legs. So we're gonna add some to the shoulders and then we're gonna also add them to the lower arms. And then later on, I also added some spikes to the back of the neck because I realized I needed some there as well. Okay, so we have all of our spikes in place, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of touch up the seams around them. If you notice, they're kind of a little rough, so we're gonna take a little bit of fur fabric, we're just gonna kind of glue strips of it around the spikes to kind of cover that up. So I'm just gonna go around the spikes on the arms, legs, around the neck and everything, even the wings. And then once all of that is in place, we're gonna let it dry and our piece is finally done. made Nergigante. I had so much fun making him. He took forever and he was definitely a challenge, but he was well worth it. Now this piece was a commission, so he's not going to be in my Etsy shop, but I am currently working on filling it back up, so go ahead and keep an eye out for that. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!